you know, so the unit is called Digital Heritage Design Interaction and uh, Evaluation. Uh, and the unit consists of three lessons. The first lesson introduces the approach of Digital with a detailed argumentation about why this approach is promising uh, in the field of heritage. Um, and ended with a proposed model of digital heritage. And the second lesson presents four scenarios um, in which interactive digital prototypes were designed and deployed in real world heritage environments to explore how the seamless integration of digital technology into physical reality facilitates the communication of heritage. While the third lesson focuses on the evaluation of digital heritage, uh, deploying a massive method evaluation methodology in order to assess the communication of heritage information and user engagement concluded by an evaluation framework of digital heritage. So this unit is, uh, is built based on my PhD thesis that I finished last year at KU Leuven, the University of Leuven in Belgium. And the context of this study is built heritage, which expresses the richness and the diversity of our common past. And we believe that our monuments are not just physical objects, but also they communicate meanings and values over time. So these meanings and values tend to vary from explicit information, uh, which is uh, relatively easy to present, to more tacit qualities and values, which is more challenging to communicate. So we can see that digital technologies have enabled various opportunities for communicating this information via a variety of paradigms, such as virtual reality for visualizing uh, the virtual reconstruction of ancient worlds, or augmented reality for immersing users in historical stories. But we still seek a communication process that can be more engaging, more informative, more collaborative, and potentially enjoyable. And this could be tangible interaction, which emphasizes the tangibility and materiality of the interface, and why tangible interaction? Because it's, it's a promising paradigm, and the touch experience causes better remembering of the information. It's also collaborative, uh, affordable, easy to learn. And all of these uh, advantages are relevant for communicating heritage. So we have physical and digital. Each has different key qualities. And physical, for example, which is the most common in communication, we have affordance how the physical form demonstrates the possibility of an action, how the information can be visualized in a physical way, situatedness, meaning how the information uh, relies on the physical context to be understood. But we have also other key qualities of digital, such as uh, digital technology allows for an immediate uh, access for different layers of information, and uh, the information can be automatically personalized, and it allows for an immersive experience. So that's why we have physical and digital, and we propose the integration of digital technology into physical reality. That's why we came up with the term digital. We believe that digital heritage is a potential medium for more enriched and playful communication of heritage values and qualities. So we propose the model of digital heritage. So we have the horizontal axis represents the level of physical affordance, such as how such as how the features of an interface physically supports or facilitates taking an action, while the vertical axis conveys the level of situatedness or how the technology depends on the physical context to communicate the information. So for example, we have here websites, and most websites are non-situated in nature. That means you can appreciate the knowledge regardless of the location. But we have here on the other side, Projection mapping, which is more situated as the graphical depiction of the information can be directly and physically related to the artifact on which uh, the projection occurs. And there are many communication technologies which are located in the model. And uh, the model considers that almost every communication technology is digital in some way or form, but some are more digital than others. Uh, and accordingly, the model proposes three distinct categories of digital heritage, augmented, integrated, and actuated. And the second lesson of this unit, uh, that we investigate some digital approaches to communicate heritage information through four experimental case studies, 
mainly from their collaboration with the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels. So, for example, in the first study, we investigated the role of tangible interaction to communicate tacit knowledge of built heritage. We have uh, Zoser Pyramid Complex as a case studies, and the chosen story to be communicated was related to the entrance colonnade, as it has been suggested that the architecture of the colonnade represented the map of ancient Egypt. So each niche, which is the space between the two adjacent columns, represent one of the norms, which is a territorial division of ancient Egypt. And here, uh, the, this chamber represents the delta. So we designed, uh, implemented, and experimented three different conditions. And each condition has um, an interactive navigation as an input, which is a map of ancient Egypt, and passive representation which is, as an output, which is a um, uh, it's a view of the entrance coordinate that dynamically changes according to the user's interaction. For example, we have here in the first condition as a touch screen showing the map of ancient Egypt and the walkthrough navigation in the building. And for the second condition, we have a physical installation of the map of ancient Egypt with a 3D printed statue of the pharaoh with also um, a navigation, a walkthrough navigation in the building. While the third condition, we have the physical installation of the map with a 3D printed statue, and here we have a maquette with different LEDs that lights up according to the position of the form. While in the second study, uh, we investigated how augmented reality enhances the communication of the architectural context of an isolated relief uh, from the Nimrud Palace in Iraq, which was exhibited totally out of context at the museum in Brussels. And as an exceptional motivation that the original palace has been recently destroyed by ISIS. So we digitally reconstructed the room where the artifact was located, and that was done uh, in an abstract visualization by emphasizing some architectural features. And then we developed an augmented reality application, and uh, we invite visitors, museum visitors, to interact with that. So for example, here, you can just point the camera to the object, and then you can see the room where the object was located, and you can look around and see the room from different angles, and you see the different architectural features of that room. In the third study, we had an interesting case, which is a medieval chapel in the eastern part of Belgium, uh, which witnessed several building phases during about 900 years. So we choose um, three building phases of that chapel to communicate to visitors. We built the models both digitally, uh, using 3D modeling software and also physically by 3D printing them. And we designed an interface that users can steer the digital model by placing um, the physical, the corresponding physical model on the design platform. So visitors can choose one of the building phases here. And by controlling the projector by their hands, they can see how this phase looked like in the past, seeing the projected visualizations on the walls and the ceiling of the chapel. So here, this is a very short video explaining uh, the idea. You choose one of the models, physical models, you place it, and then you can see how this chapel looked like in the 13th century. For example, these two windows don't exist anymore. And for example, you can see how the windows, how the ceiling, it was wooden trusses. It was not flattened uh, like it's now. While in the last study, we combined the digital experience with gamification approach uh, to support cultural learning of young museum visitors. And our case study is an original ancient Egyptian tomb chapel in a scale one to one at the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels. And this chapel is valorized in learning plans for school visits. So we organized the co-design workshop with heritage professionals to define three types of tacit knowledge to communicate, and we come up with three distinct categories of knowledge. One about architectural qualities, about the false door, and historical values about the types of offering, and artistic features about the role of color to distinguish the genders in ancient Egyptian civilization. And our methodology supports different styles of collaboration and gamification. We design three different game setups to communicate three different types of information. So here, this is a chosen part of the internal wall. And then we built a replica in a scale one to one to be located outside the tomb. And this replica consists of three games with shared progress power, 
uh, when participants complete each game, more information is revealed uh, to them. So here, this is a look in, uh, location of the installation outside the Tomp Chapel. And this is a short video explained uh, the game setup. So we have here three games. The first one, we invite children to solve 3D puzzle. And then after solving the 3D puzzle, they have to go inside the Tomp Chapel to figure out where to locate this, uh, this one on the installation. And when they put it, for example, like that on the installation using strong magnets, they have LEDs in the progress bar and more information about the full store is revealed. The second game, we give them magnetic cards to sort the different types of offerings in ancient Egypt. And when they sort the offerings, they have LED lights on for each correct card and then more information about offerings is revealed to them. Last one, last game, we give them also magnetic cards uh, with dark and light colors. They go inside to figure out this figure was painted in dark or uh, light. And when they put it in place, they have also in the progress bar and then information about paintings is revealed to them. And we designed it in a multi-language interface. We can easily change it from Dutch to English or French. And also, uh, we conclude the experience by um, a playful user experience questionnaire so students or children they can evaluate their experience whether it's for example like boring or enjoying whether it's uh, informative not informative creative or or not and so on and the last lesson of this unit we discuss the different evaluation methods that can be applied to assess uh, the communication of heritage information and also uh, to assess the user engagement so the first method that we used it was an observation uh, for example, how the observation results can be chronologically mapped for each participant to report on the user behavior, or using the observation results to investigate the angle of view in the augmented reality study, or basing the observation results on a theoretical model to investigate how the game setups in the last scenario distributed the learning cycle in terms of how they occurred in space or in time. And the second method that we use, it's uh, interviews. So participants for each study were invited to uh, participate in a semi-structured interview that was audio recorded. Uh, questions focused on whether and how they learned about heritage through their interaction with the digital prototypes. And they were also invited to do a sketching activity to report uh, on estimating dimensions or to describe the differences between two building phases uh, by sketching a cross section in the third scenario, or uh, to describe the appearance of heritage using 2D and 3D sketching. And in this study, we had very interesting results in terms of remembering different architectural features. And uh, the last evaluation method, it's a uh, user experience questionnaire. So after the interviews, participants were asked to fill in a uh, user experience questionnaire to enable them to express their subjective feelings, impressions, or attitudes. Um, and in the case of children, the questionnaire was designed as a tangible extension of the game experience by using a Lego blocks, as I just explained. And we conclude this lesson by presenting an evaluation framework of digital heritage, indicating, indicating when and how to use the different methods based on the design objectives. For example, uh, for the learning objectives, these are the appropriate methods to use uh, and so on. And also in the framework, we present novel evaluation methods such as uh, sketching to report on the learning and memorability of architectural features and the playful user experience questionnaire to collect data from children in loaded environments. And the unit also includes um, two exercises as an imagine, imaginary context to design digital experience of a specific museum uh, artifact and also to design an evaluation methodology of uh, this uh, experience. Yeah, thank you uh, very much.